Good morning, saints of God. Praise the Lord. Good morning to everybody. Good morning to you, saints of God. You're reading through behind the veil ministries. Probably had birthday with you, saints of God, this morning here. Amen. Thank the Lord for another opportunity, saints, for us to fellowship together. Amen. And on the Lord, saints of God, with our time. Amen. With our praise, with our worship. Amen. We thank the Lord, saints of God, for the privilege to be in that number. Amen. We thank him this morning, saints of God, amen, life, health, and strength, amen. And I always thank him, saints of God, for a made-up mind, amen, to run and seek after his face, amen. We thank him this morning, saints of God, amen, as you as you people of God come online here, saints of God, come in with the same mind and heart, amen, to honor the Lord thy God, amen. We thank you, saints of God, we thank you, saints of God, for those who will be on there live and those who even will be on the replay, amen. We pray the Lord speaks to you. Uh, this morning concerning his word, amen. We pray that you receive, amen, what the Holy Spirit is trying to say to his people. The Lord is always talking, saints God, always talking. But are we in tune, saints God, to hear what he's saying? And when we do hear, do we also obey? Amen. That's the part to be playing the singing, saints of God. The Lord has calls. The Lord has things he wants us to accomplish, amen. But saints, we have to agree with the Lord to get those things done, Amen. So, saints, we believe that the saints, the Lord has everything under control. Saints, uh, there is some truth in that sense of God. But with that also being said, he also needs the agreement from men. Amen. Because, saints, God, you, there could be a call in your life to do, to, to be a missionary, to go to Africa, to go to, you know, uh, saints, God, South America, whatever. You know, whatever country it may be. But if you choose not to do that, then God has to choose someone else. So that means God's plan in your life, says God, did not get accomplished. Because why? You chose not to do it. The Lord's not going to make you do that, says God. So the Lord, says God, uh, works through the ministry of men, saints. You have to understand that. Because many people always put everything in God's hands. But God, God set forth laws in the spirit realm, amen, for men to preach the gospel, not for angels. No, men are the one that commissioned because men are the one that's on authority here on earth. So the Lord works through, saints God, the ministry or the agreement with men. Amen. So saints God, that's that's what you understand. You see the author of scripture. God visited Abraham and told me he's going to make him father of many nations. Abraham could have denied that. Yes, Mary could have said, I'm not, I don't want to birth a baby. Uh, I mean, I don't want to do that. So you see, saints of God, that's new covenant and old covenant. I'll give you much, much more examples. Read for yourself. You understand. Connect the dots. The men of God, women of God had to agree with the Lord to get his work done here on earth. Amen. So saying that's why we come to agreement with the Lord right now, saints God, so we can accomplish God's work for our life. Amen. But not just for ourselves. It's to bless others. Amen. People benefit from you obeying the Lord. Amen. Not just your family, saints God. The folks that are around you, they benefit from you being obedient to the Lord. Amen. That's why our salvation, saints God, is not just about us. It's but all the souls that are attached to you obeying the will and call that God has in your life. Amen. So keep that in mind, says God. When you deny the call of God, you also deny the souls that's attached to that call. Because every one of our lives, says God, every one of our lives is attached to another life or many lives. You have to understand, says God. And as I look back in my life, says if I did not obey the call of God in my life, so many souls have been saved and healed and delivered in this measure, says God. Says please. Understand, God, I'm not here bragging, God, but I'm just trying to try to get you to understand what I'm saying to you. The first day I gave, first, the first day I testified, saints, in church, that I gave my life to Christ, because I gave my, my life to Christ in my own house, says God, on a Sunday night, amen. I wasn't even in church at that time. I was not. But when I went and testified, and I called up, uh, the friend of church that I've been going to and that my parents had took me to, you know, I, I called, I called up the pastor there, the bishop there, because I was in and out. I wasn't no regular member. Like I said, I said, because I wasn't saved when I gave my life to Christ. Amen. And I, and I called him and he told me, would I mind coming to church Wednesday, Wednesday night? Cause I called him, I guess I called him, I, I, I think I may have called him Monday, whatever day it was, I called him and he asked me to come to the next service. I didn't go to church that Sunday morning, but I gave up my life to Christ at my house on Sunday night. But anyway, long story short, when I called the bishop and told him that I gave my life to Christ, 
He told me to come to, come to the Bible so that Wednesday and just get up there and testify. So saints, when I did testify, I went up there and ended up testifying about giving my life to Christ. That little testimony ended up, ended up turned to a sermon. To make a long story short, I went about 35, 40 minutes, whatever, of how long it was. Because the Lord is giving me words. Saints, and I only been saved a couple of days. And when I and I didn't really know what to do and didn't know the proper protocol, but I was down there in the, down there uh, by the uh, altar holding the mic and I was just speaking. I looked over my shoulder because the bishop was up there in the pulpit and I'm whispering like, "What should I do next?" He said, "Make an altar call," because I'm just words are just flowing, flowing, flowing. That I'll just get up there just say my testimony. But he didn't stop me. So he says he didn't even do anything. He didn't even teach that 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 Bible study. I gave the sermon. So anyway, I made the altar call. Anybody want to be saved? Anyone need prayer for? For any uh any uh, any needs you may have, and four people came up, thanks God. And those are those four people that I prayed with, thanks God. Two of them gave life to Christ. So, saints, if you have any question that you're called by the Lord, uh, that they would answer every question. I had no formal training, says God. I just been saved a couple of days, no training at all, says God. I led two souls to Christ. The very first time the microphone touched my hand. So that's what I mean by that. It's like many more souls after that, since I've been saved and even got the call as a prophet. But I was just a day, two, three day old Christian. Saved Sunday night, testified on the Wednesday night, and led two souls to salvation. Because see, those souls were supposed to be connected to me, says God. Those are this is just the first two that I can that I touched, and many more. But I came from being obedient, says God. What if I did not obey the Lord and give my life to Christ that Sunday that Sunday? And then also called the bishop and he invited me. You see, me obeying God and giving my life to Christ, and then being beaten to call that bishop, and then him also giving me the invitation to be able to testify in church. And when that happened, souls got touched. You see the agreement of men following the leading of the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit started all that in motion. You see, that's a part we play, says God. I just want to just, just, just tell somebody about this here. This is what the beatings would do. You don't understand the things that happen when, when one person says yes. One person says yes. And man, that I'll obey the Lord. And I'll do what you call me to do. And all the other souls connected to that there. And the bishop also, recognizing, even though I'm a day one Christian, he allowed me to get there and testify. He didn't know what was going to come about with that there. End up being a sermon, says God. And me understanding my, my call to my commission. Amen. So be encouraged, says God. Amen. To walk in obedience. Amen. You don't know what God may have you to do with that. Amen. But just govern yourself, saints of God. Amen. Uh, uh, I'm going to give you a minute or two, saints of God. We're going to get in our song of worship here. Amen. Get in our song of worship here, saints of God. Amen. Greet each other, saints of God. Good morning, women of God there. As you come online here, saints. I understand the spirit of obedience, saints of God, is necessary. For you to agree with the law, it is so such vital. It's so vital to understand that, saints. Don't put everything in the Lord's hand because he also leads you. He needs you, saints. You to agree with him, amen. To work with the Holy Ghost to get these things accomplished. Thank you, Lord. Praise his holy name, saints. Another minute, saints. We're going to get right into our song. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you, my Lord and Savior. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Amen. Say, let us get in, let us get into our song of worship, saints of God.
Thank you, Lord. Bless his name. Touching you right now Atmosphere of heaven Yes Is healing you right now Touching you Changing you Making all things new Fresh oil Flowing from heaven mm. Fresh oil Flowing from heaven, lift your hands and receive it. Oh, Aso. Ola Andre, no. the atmosphere of heaven. Thank you, Jesus. It's touching you right now. The atmosphere of heaven is healing you right now. Yes, Father. Restoring you, changing you, making all things new. It's fresh oil. Yes, Jesus. Flowing from heaven. La basu. It's fresh oil. Flowing from heaven. It's fresh oil. Sima your hands and receive right now oh, 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 oh. thank you jesus ala bundre la sola mundo lobo samanda bano as your past is over thank you jesus your future is bright so step on Everything you need is here. Yes, Father. Everything, everything. Mm. Everything you need is oh, here. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Everything. Oh, 
all. Praise his name, saints of God. Praise his name, praise his name. Praise his name, saints of God, for he has done great things, saints. I say, for he has done great things. Praise his name, saints of God, and you're going out and you're coming in. Amen. We honor the Lord that God, saints, with all of our being. Amen. With life, health, and strength, says God. All those things, says God, came from the Lord. Amen. It didn't come from us, says God. Uh, we being so smart that we understanding this and that. We understand how to eat well and all those things. That, that's a part of it, saints of God. Says that that's a part of it, saints. But even with that being said, saints of God, we know that the enemy can, can afflict people, saints of God, can afflict a healthy man. Just like can afflict the man that doesn't take care of themselves. Amen. Those are attacks of the enemy. The enemy can attack you. The enemy can attack anyone, says God. As we know. But by God, saints, the Lord, says God, can lift up and stand against our enemies. Amen. Those whose life, heart, mind is stayed upon him. The Lord can give us rest, says God. Amen. He can give us rest, says God. Even says God, when we're in the valley, the Lord can still give us rest. Amen. No matter where we locate this, God, God can deliver his peace to us. In what location? He can bring peace in the lion's den. Yes. Glory to God. In the hospital, says God, whatever. Or the middle of a divorce. Or even at a funeral. The Lord can give us peace. The Lord can still give us rest, says God. And I thank the Lord, says God, for giving me those things, says God. During my times of testing. Times of, times of trying. Amen. The Lord delivered me. The Lord kept me. Amen. As he kept many of you guys. In the name of Jesus. Uh, we thank him, says God. We honor him. And we appreciate who he is to us, says God. King of kings, Lord of lords. In saints, we have not been forsaken, says God. We have not been left to our own devices. Glory to God. Saints, he has kept you and I alive. Yes. He's brought us joy, says God. Saints, and we are allowed to prosper in the name of Jesus. I don't believe no one on this page here is starving. Don't know how they're going to eat tonight. Yes, saints, there are, there are many people there that don't know what they're going to eat tonight or how they're going to eat tonight. But most of us, says God, that's not our story. So with that being said, says God, we should be able to praise the Lord with all of our breath. Amen. And be thankful, says God. Maybe you don't have everything, says God, that you may need, but you still have your necessities, says God. You're not on the streets. You're not under a bridge. You're not in a mental war, says God. You are clothed in your right mind. That's why we give God the praise. That's why we give him the honor and the glory. So our hands, says God, are prostrated above. Yes. Lifting everything up to Jesus. Being thankful, says God, for who he is to us. You worship God because you know who he is to you, says God. Those who don't know their God, says God, don't have praise in, in his spirit. But those who do know their God, sorry, they lift everything up to him. Because he is the very air that they breathe. La ba so, y la ba circolo, nanda la solo, y la ba ma sondre. Saints, he is the author of my book because I am not writing my own story. Glory to God. And I thank him, saints, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you. In the name of Jesus. Praise his name, saints God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you. In the name of Jesus. Alabamo solo bo mandabaso. Holy Ghost, move how you want to move. You are not restrained in this place, Holy Ghost. We invite you in this place to touch the people, to set the atmosphere on fire, make conducive for you to move, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. We agree with you, O oh Lord, whatever heaven wants to do here on earth, do it through us, O oh Lord. La Sundro, Ilabama, Shilabamo, Ilabo, Semande, Labandoso, Ilamandro, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Abasondo. Shandala maloboso. Indababmando lobo. Lambala baba la baba so. In the name of Jesus. 
Ah, uh, thank you, Jesus. Ah, uh, let's lift them up, saints of God. Oh, we honor him. Oh, we thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Saints, if you have your Bible, saints of God, uh, I love this atmosphere, saints. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to our first scripture verse, saints of God. It's going to come from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, saints. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Start with verse 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2. And the title of my lesson, saints of God, is called Remembering Your Labor in the Gospel. Remembering Your Labor in the Gospel. In the gospel. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2. I'll give you a minute to find a scripture verse, saints. Sababu, Sebabu, Indala Sundo. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Remembering your labor in the gospel. Asulo bo silababa to indababa no so mo kata. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. First Thessalonians, thanks to God. Chapter 1, verse 2, huh? and it reads, Saints, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. Verse 4 says, Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. Verse 5. For our gospel came, un came not unto you in word only, but also in power and the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know which manner of men we were among you for your sake. Verse 6. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Ghost. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, right now for being here with us, Lord Jesus. You say your word, Father, as Father, when two or three are gathered again in your name, there you will be in the midst, Father. Lord, I thank you for being in the midst, Father, right now, Lord, at this time. It's time in your word, Father, right now, Lord. Touch the hearts and minds of your people, Father, right now, Lord. Let the spirit of obedience, Father, fall upon their heads, fall upon their minds, their hearts, Father. Allow them, Father, right now, Lord, to open their mind, their spirit, Father, to receive word, Father, to receive seed from your word, Lord Jesus. And Father, we come against every spirit of slumber, sleep, Father, every spirit of witchcraft, Father, every spirit of sabotage, Father, confusion, Father, right now. We break the backs of our enemies, Father, right now. Father, right now, we speak peace, be still in the atmosphere, Father, right now, Lord. Let a listening ear, Father, and understanding spirit, Father, be among the people, Father, right now, Lord. Father, right, we cut off all communication lines, flat lines, lit lines. For the spirits of them, the spiritual grounds, no way before the gifts of people, God shall prosper. And in the tongue that rise with his judgment, I condemn it right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Father, right now, Lord Jesus, Father, right now, for speaking to me, Father, right now, Lord. Lord, I give myself to you, Father. Use me, Father, holy and fully, Father, right now. Touch my tongue, Father. Let it be a double-edged sword, Father. Rather than dividing the word of truth, but also executing things unto my enemies, Father, right now, Lord. And Father God, rather download me a raiment, Father, into my spirit, man, into my inner man, Father, right now. Help me speak through Holy Ghost utterance, Father. Not through the wisdom of men, Father, but through the power, Father, and insight, Father, and authority from the Lord, right now. I thank you, Father, for teaching my hands to war, Father, right now. Father, I thank you, Lord, right now, Lord. Me and people, God, we are seated. seated I'm seated together in heaven, Father. Father, right inside Christ Jesus, far above all principalities, powers and might, Father. I thank you, Father, for being our shield and our brother, Father. Thank you for blowing the horn of our salvation, Father. Put a wall of fire around us, Father. Take this, Father, from seen and unseen things. Father, make me an iron pillar, Father, a brazen wall against my enemies, Father, right now, Lord. I thank you, Father, that peace be still in our hearts, Father, right now, Lord. And let every soul, for heart and mind, say amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise his name, saints of God. Praise his name, saints of God. Remembering your labor in the gospel. So saints, verse 2 says, La basundre, 
Sebondre Konseba. We give thanks to God always for you all. Make a mention of you in our prayers. So thanks. As it says in Thessalonians uh, verse 1 and 2, it says, We give thanks to God always for you all. Make a mention of you in our prayers. Saints, prayers are needed, saints, consistently for the leaders and laborers of the gospel. Saints, consistent prayers. Saints, you hear people say all the time, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for your ministry. I'm doing this here. Saints, don't just be a person that uses idle words. Consistent prayers, says God, are needed for those who preach the gospel and the co-laborers of the word. Say the gospel does not go forth, says God, without prayers, says God, without confidence, and also without resources. These are things, says God, that I needed to do the work of the Lord. Many folks believe that this God is going to do things. Saints, God always works through men. Saints, you have to understand. God works through men. Saints, if men don't pray, then God's will does not come here on earth. Yes, we have to do this, God. So says the God. For a ministry to stand, God, if people don't support that ministry, it won't stand. If people don't, don't say, you know what? I need to go so into this church or so into this man of God and do this here, then life won't be on. Or they can't do this here online. They can't do that online. Whatever case may be. So saints, you understand, says God, prayers and all these different things need to be done to help uplift the leaders, to uplift the ministry, to help do the work of the Lord. Amen. They are, they, these things, says God, are not maybe. They need to be done consistently, says God. And prayers is the foundation. Prayers is one of the first main things. But yes, there are other things also. As I say again, yes, prayers to God, resources. And I'll say, I also say that obedience is consistency. Yes, of supporting the God, of praying for people, praying for the leaders in God that are, that are doing the work of the Lord. And the laborers also, there are people that work in the ministry, they help things to move, help things to go. So says, even when y'all see me online, it says, God, you think this is a, this is a sugar the jive thing. There are folks, says God, that help me. That, that there are things that I have to do online, says God. There are, that all these things with, with, with says God, with, with my flyers and with my website and with handling my appointments for deliverance and all different things, says God. Says God, putting these things together that I have to do. My classes that I do online for school deliverance. There are, many, there are also people that help me do this stuff. Like, I can't do it by myself. God says, I'm doing this stuff seven days a week. I don't take a day off and mention this, God. Full time work and also a full time ministry, you're going to call it. So I need prayers, like other leaders need prayers to do the work of the ministry. Many times people are asleep, don't know that leaders are laboring. They are laboring up two, three in the morning because God is dealing with you about somebody. Yes, or you got another call, or you got an inbox. Somebody needs some prayers, somebody needs some deliverance. I'm going this way, I'm going to the hospital. Yes, I get them, says God. Got one this morning. Got one this morning, I'm going to the hospital. Say these are normal things, praying for them. All, all the laboring, says God. So, so Paul was saying, the prayers for leaders need to be consistent. Yes, consistent. Keep them on your mind. Yes, and all the laborers, they help put the ministry forward. They help do the work of the Lord. Amen. So says, verse 3 says, remembering without ceasing your work of faith. So saints, many leaders go through things thing because there isn't consistent prayers lifted up for them. There is. See, saints, God, there are some things that leaders go through that they should not go through if people are on the wall praying for them. They wouldn't go through it if somebody was praying. But some don't. They'll say they're praying, but they're not really. It just rehearsed religious words that they say. Saints. The leaders of God, they carry the full burden of the ministry and the prayer requests and needs of the people. They do. They're carrying it, says God. So saints, people don't understand all the stuff that's dumped on them. Yes, it's dumped on them. Every day, people come with their trouble and dump it on the leader's lap. They do. And many says God, do this every day or weekly. And they don't support that preacher. They don't support that ministry. But they demand that preacher see by their needs though. If they don't, if that preacher don't pray for them, or don't care their needs, they'll blast them. Says God, round town, also face or also on social media. That so-called preacher he ain't even pray for me. He ain't even doing nothing for me. He ain't nothing. 
So I say, then a lot of y'all believe it. Y'all believe what they say and what they post. I hear people say all the time, church hurt. Anybody ever think about leaders being hurt? Saints, two things can be true. Yes, people have been hurt by ministries. But also, but people have also hurt leaders. Yeah. Understand both things. Two things can be true. You see? Carrying the burden of ministry and the call and the demand of all this stuff. All of this stuff that's dumped on their laps. Yes, the issues. Issues that people got going on. All the prayer requests. I need deliverance for this. I need that. Yes, this going on. Can you talk to my church? Can you talk to my husband? Can you talk to my wife? Can you counsel us? Our marriage got, got issues. On and on and on and on. Consistent prayers are needed. So thanks again. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith. See, Paul is just talking about it, says God. Continue to understand and remember what they are doing. Yes. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love. Yes. Saints, ministry isn't just a work of faith, but also it's called a labor of love. You cannot be in ministry if you don't love people. You cannot be, says God, if you don't love people. You can be in ministry. Could not be. Love, says God, has to be one of the foundations in any leader's heart to be in ministry. Because, saints, you're always dealing with people. Every day, you're dealing with people. So if you don't love people, then you can't be in ministry. There's no way if you don't love people that you will be in ministry. Because, serious, it gets taxing. It does get taxing. Every phone call is an issue. Somebody needs something, says God. And that's the life that true leaders have. That's why remembering them in your prayers, their labor of love. You see something that says, it's not just about faith. It's also about the labor of love that they have. Saints. And it says, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ and in the sight of God and our Father. So saints. So you see, saints, God, there is our faith and labor of love and patience of hope in Christ Jesus. So saints, Saints, you have to love God's people in order to do His work. And with that being said, God, when you are laboring because you love God's people, sometimes, as God, you as leaders can get battle weary because you may not always see the fruits of your labor. So you have to endure in your faith and hope in Christ Jesus. Because many times you say, well, is my work being appreciated? All the pouring into these people, the teaching of the lessons, up two, three in the morning, preparing, praying and preparing lessons for these people. Do they appreciate it? Am I really seeing uh, fruits of my labor? Many priests have these questions all the time, says God, because the cost that they pay to give people these words. Prayers are needed. Yes, prayers, consistent prayers. Yes, are needed for the labor of love that's being done for you behind the scenes. So, so yes, says God, some people... I ain't gonna lie to God. There are some priests, God, that go online and download the sermon. Or they copy sermons. They do. Saints, yes, some do that. They don't sit there and be in prayer. They don't really hear a word from the Lord. Yes, says God, we know something to do that. And some of y'all may know something to do, to do that. But you know, says God, when the word is from the Holy Ghost, it touches your spirit, it quickens your spirit, says God. You know it's not been rehearsed, not dried or watered down. It meets you at your location. That word found you at your current address. You know that word came via the Holy Ghost. Because men's hands were attached to that sermon. It touched you. It know what you needed at that moment. Glory to God. It met you there in the valley, in that pit, in that shame, in that misery. Whatever you were going through. The word met you there. Yes. And it brought the word of deliverance to your soul. Yes. They have, says God, the least have to have, be patient in their hope in Christ because you can always see the immediate results of your labor the mindset that leaders have to have to endure this thing keep preaching keep praying for folks keep lifting them up pouring to the cup over and over and over and over I'm talking about remembering your labor in the gospel 
Consistent prayers are needed to prop up the leaders, to encourage these leaders. Glory to God and all the co-laborers to help the ministry work. These things are needed on a consistent basis. Don't just say you're praying for somebody, but you never say the words of the Lord concerning their souls. Pray for the leaders. Pray for the laborers to help things go. Pray for those who use their testimony at their jobs. Those who are doing things. The missionaries that are working and clowning. They need consistent prayers. Support of the people. Don't speak idle words if you don't mean those things, says God. If you say you are praying for somebody, then actually pray for them. Take their name to the altar. Take their name to the throne room of God. Idle words, says God, you will be held accountable for it. If I say I'm praying for you, says God, best believe I'm praying for you. I'm calling your name out. And those who know also when they come to me for deliverance, they know what God does for them during those sessions. Talking about laboring, says God. The labor that sometimes people can't see. Laboring behind the scenes. Enduring, glory to God. Enduring hard times. Just for the labor of the gospel. And for the love of God's people. Paul says, remembering those. Their labor of love. Glory to God. Remember without ceasing your work in faith and labor of love. And patience of the hope in Christ. Our hope is always anchored in Christ. Our hope resides in Christ. Because men will let you down, says God. Saints, people you pour into, you pour into, you pour into, says God. Men, when you need something back, you says God, and they turn their backs on you. It happens that way, says God. But people don't talk about leaders hurt. They're always saying, church hurt them. But how about you hurting the preachers? These things don't get said at all. Their belief only goes one way. Saints, a knife cut both ways. Yes, it can. It can cut the person that you say that you drink the light to war, but also cut the one that's holding the light. Yes, two things can be true. I'm talking about remembering your labor in the gospel, the labor of love. Consistent prayers need to be prayed over those who preach and teach the gospel and endure hard times for your soul's sake. In the name of Jesus. Your labor and work, saints, has not been forgotten in the Lord as you endure these times just to feed God's people. Yes, the preachers, the leaders, and the co-laborers that help them do God's work. Consistent prayers need to be prayed for them. Let's keep moving, saints, God. Verse 4 says, Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. Saints, what that means is God. Saints, the election of God means that you were chosen by him to do this type of work. Election. Yes. Yes, you were chosen by the Lord to do this call, to do this work. The things that you are doing for the Lord, God, you have been elected for that. It's not by chance, God. You were chosen by the Lord. You were a vessel of honor that God picked out of that, out of that pile of people. But, but yet he chose you. I say this to God, when you are anointed by the Lord, God, you cannot be here in a crowd of a thousand people. You will be found out. You will rise to the surface because what's in you cannot be hidden. Chosen by the Lord. Glory to God. For a time such as this. Because you are built to endure hard times. He's talking about you, woman of God. He's talking about you, man of God. True vessel of honor. Yes, God is remembering and has not forgotten your work. Glory to God. You have been elected, chosen by God to do these things. Many folks have fell by the wayside. Yes, and took their hands off the plow. But you say, even though I'm tired, my hands are, have corns in them, I'm going to keep my hands on the plow. I'm going to plow and push this field. Glory to God. Maybe people don't, people don't give me the, the accolades, the praise of God that I need. Maybe they don't support me as they should. But I'm going to keep laboring in this field because God has chosen me. Glory to God. That's why you labor, this God, because you've been chosen by the Lord. Says God, you always don't, you're not going to always get encouraged from people. Says every real preacher knows that. But you got to encourage others. That's the cause for leadership. You are always giving out. Sometimes it's at your need. And I say many times at your own need. Yes, you may need prayer, but you're praying for others. True leaders don't take days off. That's why God is remembering their labor of love. 
Let's keep going, saints of God. I'm almost done. Se bon se kan. Eko nala. Se bon de. You've been chosen and elected for a time like this. Verse 5, saints. For our gospel came not unto you in word only. O kabasu asaba dre sumba. Saints of God. The Apostle Paul was telling the people that says God at Thessalonica, we brought the word of God to you. Hallelujah. It's our gospel came not unto you in word only. Saints, how many places you go to, says God, when you see word only? Thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. But guess what, Paul said? I didn't just bring you word only. He said, look, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know which men of men we were among you for your sake. So saints, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost. Saints, the gospel isn't supposed to be just philosophical, but in power and under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Saints, this is what happens as a God. When there is no power, only words, Behind, said behind these sermons, saints, the people says God don't get what they need from the Lord. Says I, says God, one of the things that, that, that that's gotten me, says God, this is why I, I turned down many requests. I have to uh, uh, of assignments that I've had because many of them says God, I know that these churches aren't ready for the true power of the gospel because all they've had is just word, and the leaders don't want it. So I'm never going to go to a place where the leader don't, don't want change. He don't want breakthrough, healing, and deliverance. I won't go, I won't go to a church that says God. And this is what happens. When you go sit into a ministry that God, where there is no power of the Holy Ghost. So healing and deliverance cannot happen. Souls can't be saved and broke free. When you don't have this in, when you don't have the power of God behind it. Every servant for any sent leader needs to be under the authority of the Holy Ghost. Because when it is... Whatever the people need, says God, will be available to them. Paul said, we did not bring you word. You see, we did not bring you word. Because he says, God, when you bring, says God, the power of the Holy Ghost. What will happen? Let's read again. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. So saints, when the word is back up, says to God, with power, says God, and examples of what you just preach, then people have to feel assurance that God is real. Amen? God is real when there is, says God, a demonstration of that in which you just preached. You cannot just bring words, empty words, says God, with though you talk about God can heal, but there's no healing. God can deliver, but there's no deliverance. God can save, but there's no salvation. This is word only. Philosophical banter. Legalism. Men's intellect gets in the way of the Holy Ghost. Power needs to be available. Holy Ghost representation should be flowing through the church. Because when it does, the enemy says, God, enemy can't stay in that church. Sickness and disease has to leave. Witchcraft is broke by the power of the Holy Ghost. But you can't do this because witchcraft is in the pulpit. That's many churches are represented by witchcraft. People are bound. Yes. Breakthrough is not available. So only thing coming out is just word only. Empty words from a scripture. Rehearsed sermons. Dry. Put you to sleep preachers in churches. But those, but those preachers are put out front. But those who are really laboring are put in the rear. That's what God has done. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me y'all. That's what Satan has done. Promoted people with no power, with no authority. They're on the forefront. Those people are getting supported. But the true Holy Ghost still preaches. Glory to God. I've been put in the back seat. Yes. So you wonder why people say God are leaving churches. They are not seeing any demonstration from the Holy Ghost. Where is the healing at? Where is the deliverance at? Paul says, we brought you all these things. We didn't, just didn't talk you to death. Power was demonstrated. We came on the scenes. Healing and deliverance supposed to be an everyday occurrence. 
every time the church doors open. But why are they aren't there? Because we aren't requiring it. It's not just supposed to be a word. There got to be demonstration of that in which you preach. Glory to God. So when people see this, they have to click insurance that God is real. Nobody has to tell you that God's real when you get delivered from evil spirits, from mind control, from sick and disease, cancer, breaking the back, glory to God, COVID, breaking his back, glory to God, mental illness, breaking his back, addictions, breaking his back. When God sets you free, says to God, that's all you need for assurance. It don't matter what nobody ever says again about your life. Now, you will never even think about going to another religion because you know God is real. Because demonstration of that in which they preach was on a full platform. Talking about the labor of love. The preachers operate upon the power of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. There won't be anything restrained in that church service. Glory to God. All these things will be available. Yes, glory to God. Glory to God. It should be an everyday occurrence when you are under the authority of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You won't speak empty words again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And Paul said, as you know in which assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. So Paul said to him, you know how we operated. Yes, we operate upon the power of the Holy Ghost, but we also operate in God's perfect love toward his people. So Paul said, you know what men and men we were. We ain't come just written our mouth. We operate in the power of God, but we also love on his people. We were approachable. You can talk to us. Yes, we wasn't standoffish. We didn't act like we was better than you. See, I'm talking about the saying Scott, the mannerism also. And this is also why God won't use some preachers. Because many of them are full of themselves. When they ain't got no authority yet. Imagine what God actually was using for healing and deliverance. How full of themselves they would be. You see? But Paul, so even though we operate like that, we weren't standoffish. We still proved to you that we love the Lord. Yes, we were there as servants. Servants to serve his people. Amen. And that's the mark of true leaders. It says, and I thank the Lord for what he's done in my life. But the main thing is, is that I thank God that God has allowed me to be a blessing to many others. So it's not about me. It says, God, I'm, says, I'm here to be a blessing to you. Amen. To help you get God's best. To help you get set free and healed, delivered. All the things that God has allowed, the things that go forth in this ministry of things. You see? Because I'm here to be poured out. I'm not here, says God, to pop myself on the back. I have no secondary agenda. No, I have no secondary agenda. And the people that, that's, that's been in my ministry, that have come to me for the deliverance, they know what manner of man I am. And this is what Paul says. You guys know what manner of men we were when you were in front of us. You knew how we carried ourselves. We respected you. We, we didn't treat you bad. When you came up with your issues, we didn't embarrass you. We didn't talk about you, blast you. We kept the information you brought to us in privacy and secrecy. Yes, we were trustworthy people. So Paul is saying all these things. People there in Thessalonica know how we treated you. Amen. We respected you. And we were there for all your needs as God gave us grace to be so. Amen. Yes. That's how these men of God operate. Gospel is supposed to be demonstrated by power. Amen. Power. Yes. Under the direction of the Holy Ghost. And leaders love on God's people. Because you cannot labor in the gospel without love. Amen. Yes, it is. But that also being said, that love that leaders have and all those who co-labor with the leaders to do God's work, they also need prayers and appreciation from the people. Amen. To put something back in them. Yes. Yes. To support them. To lift them back up. Amen. Because you don't know what they did with. They're also human too. You think you don't got issues? 
they'll get attacked by Satan. Imagine really this. <laughs> most of the time it's five. Whatever you think you're dealing with, most of the time it's five. And then you got you got life of some leaders. But it's even worse when you're in the deliverance ministry. Even worse. Because you're doing spiritual surgery. You fighting the devil's bad knuckles. Amen. They ain't just preaching. But you're in deliverance, you fighting the demons bad knuckle. Amen. You know how I'm not a servant doing this work yet. No. You got to prove you know God. You have to prove you know God every day. Amen. You can't hide behind the sermon. No, sir. No, no. Verse 6 says, God. And it says, And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. So saints, as the people became followers of Christ and of Paul's ministry, saints, it caused them much affliction, but they took it with great joy in the Holy Ghost. Saints, yes, you are going to endure some things. And you see Paul saying, these people here, they endure a lot of afflictions, says God, for following the gospel of Jesus. As you, says God, you're going to endure some things, yes. As you follow and obey the teaching of Christ Jesus. Yes, you are. But Paul said these people said God endured much affliction and took it as joy in the Holy Ghost. You see? Because the Holy Ghost says God will, won't allow you, says God, to be subject to your circumstances. Because says you gotta understand, says God, when you go through certain circumstances that it can change right now your personality, it can change your because your emotions is what sometimes can change your personality if you're not careful. Says you can experience emotions. But that don't mean they have to change your personality. But the problem is, when we don't, says God, when we don't, says God, draw a line in the sand between our emotions and our spirit, man. You see, you have to understand, just because, says God, you're going through a hard time, it doesn't mean your spirit, man, needs to change. Now you're bitter and you're angry. Many Christians, God, have not understood that. Because the affliction they went through now has changed their personality. Now they don't have joy anymore. You see? Because the emotion, says God, took control of the spirit. And now their whole character changed. They don't have the same testimony of Christ anymore. They're not walking in love anymore. They're angry. They're bitter with God. And bitter against people of God in general. It has happened to many Christians, says God, when they went through afflictions. You see? But Paul says that didn't change them. They kept the joy in the Holy Ghost. Even though they went through much, the cost they had to pay. The people there at Thessalonica for, for, for choosing to serve Jesus. Yes, just like many of us as God, you may lose friendships, family members. Yes, just because you chose to serve Jesus. You may be marginalized, disrespected, talked about, character assassinated because of people. You are going to pay a cost for this gospel, not only as a preacher, but just a follower of Christ. You see that as God. But you have to have the love and enduring patience to still see Jesus in the midst of your stones and put the emotions where they're supposed to be. Since God, you're never not going to have some type of emotion. That's what makes you human. But the problem comes in when you don't know how to control those emotions. When they take control of the spirit man now and knock you off course. Now you have no more joy in your spirit. Since God, now you're a bitter, angry Christian. And some preachers, says God, have went through affliction. And they did not deal with their emotions. And you see it in their sermons. They're preaching angry. And you feel it. There's no Holy Ghost in their sermons anymore. Because they didn't sit down and get healed from what they were going through. Anyone, says God, if they're not careful, can be subject to their emotions. Affliction is going to come, says God. They're going to come. Yes, it's just a matter of time. It's not if it just went. You see, but we need to have that enduring faith and love, amen, and joy in the Holy Ghost to endure these afflictions and storms that we go through for being people of God. Because it says that we are, we were elected by the Lord. We are part of these elect. We were called for a time such as this. Know that God knew your life when He chose you. He knew that the times you were going to go through this death in your family, loss of job, affliction in your body, different things you were going to go through. 
Heaven was not caught by surprise, thanks God. And the Lord has already made provisions for you to get healed, to get delivered, to get your peace back, get your strength back, get your praise back. Yes, get your name back. Yes. All those things that you may have lost through the bowels you went through. Heaven already knew about that. And heaven already has an answer. Heaven has your deliverance. Heaven has your healing. Heaven has your peace. You have to accept it. My peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you. But not the peace of the world. The peace of the world is fleeting, says God. We need to receive the peace of the Lord. Amen. Because I understand you go through afflictions. Amen. As the word of the Lord says. Paul said, yes, you went through much affliction. But you still kept your joy. Your countenance did not change. Even though you went to the hospital. Yes. You went through a hard time. You in the hospital, says God. And maybe only a few people went and seen you. Maybe nobody came and seen you. But you can't allow that to make you bitter and angry. Yes, says God. Sometimes when you are going through things... Sometimes people you thought that really love you weren't there for you. Saints, believe me, I understand. But you cannot allow that to change your testimony of the Lord. You have to keep it. Maintain your posture, saints, in the spirit. Maintain it. Last verse, thank God, real quick. I just want to hit this real quick. Saints, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Real quick, saints, about 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Very familiar, says God. First Corinthians 15, 58. I'm going to read this here and take us and take us on home, saints. Amen. Verse Corinthians 15, 58. Thank you, Lord. And it reads, saints. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Saints. Being steadfast and unmovable is what has to be in our fiber, has to be in our foundation. There's always going to be things that God tries to move you off of the foundation in the Lord. The Lord, the Lord says, if the foundation be moved, what can the righteous do? If the foundation be moved, what can the righteous do? Say we can't lose our foundation. Foundation is the moral foundation of the Lord in your life. Yes. What tells you right from wrong. To go left, go right. Yes. That allows you to decipher the voice of Christ than the voice of the deceiver. That's the foundation. It cannot be moved. You have to be steadfast and unmovable. No matter what you go through. I'm not saying that you won't have your, your times you may cry yourself to sleep. But even in the midst of that, your hands should be raised. You know I'm crying, Lord, I still thank you. I'm crying, Lord, but I still thank you. Lord, you still faithful. You have not forsaken me. Saints God, I've lived that. Saints God, I've walked people through that myself many, many times, and I've lived it myself. Yes, it's God. I understand pain, and I'm no trainer pain. And those who know me know my ministry. I mention you know to God by the deaths I've been through these last six years. Yes, my father, my own child, I know pain. I know what it feels like, says God. But nonetheless, my foundation was not moved. I understood the call that was on my life. The burden of the soul did not leave me. The burden to set the captives free did not leave me. Hallelujah. I understood this, God. There was a cost that had to be paid to call La Sondro Cobanda Ilabando Sondo Bonsa to call yourself man of God, to call yourself woman of God. There is going to be a cost, yes, but we have to have endurance in this walk. And say again, therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. 
For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Being steadfast and unmovable. Yes. Always keeping your hands on the plow, nevertheless. Never taking your hands off the plow. That means not removing yourself from the assignment that God has for you. You stay in the course. You are sold out the whole entire route. Yes. You are relentless in your pursuit for the Lord. No saints that your labor is not in vain. The Lord remembers your labor of love. Amen. Your endurance. Yes. And you did not allow your emotions as God to override the Holy Ghost in you. Yes. Yes, you cried many tears as God, but you did not become angry and bitter at the Lord. Or you didn't say, well, well I ain't going to preach no more. Well, I ain't going to pray for nobody no more. I'm not going to encourage nobody no more. You didn't take that approach. Many have as God. Thrown down their assignment, got mad with the Lord because they were smart times. Knowing God that we're not the only one that goes through affliction. Affliction knows everyone's address. Valley experiences knows everybody's address. Sickness, disease, death knows everybody's address. Stop acting like you are the only one that have been through hard times. That is a lie from Satan. It makes you feel like you're the only one. Now tell me to be very, very careful. Be very careful on the spirits you take on when you're going through some tough times. Be careful what's in your mind, what's going on. Put on some worship music. Put your praise garments on. Get them prayer and get them praise. Don't walk in that dark of gloom, misery. Don't do that, says God. Start your affirmations on who you are in the Lord. Keep identifying yourself as a child of God. Amen. Because the enemy will tell you that you ain't on what you're living. You believe that you, you don't got divorced or you had to bury your child, you lost your job. Look at that doctors and say, you know what I mean, you sick, you got this, you got that. You see? You have to keep affirming yourself in the Lord. Never move from your foundation. Always have to be steadfast and unmoving in the spirit, man. Yes. Not being idols is God. But knowing you also have an assignment to pray for leaders. Pray for those of God who labor in the word. Amen. And as soon as you are praying for other people, especially the leaders of God, you best believe that somebody will put your name and address on their spirit. And they'll pray you pray for you. Saints, your prayer needs are never going to go unmet. Never. Because just like the, the Holy Ghost will wake you up two in the morning and make you pray for us as a brother. God will do the same thing to somebody else. Make sure that you can get up two in the morning on the wall and pray for you. Your prayer needs are never going to go unmet. But some of us are seven. We don't understand these things yet. Yes. The other folks that's laboring too that, that's on the wall praying. And believe me, God's going to put their name on your spirit. Since I am telling this God, not only my people, says God, that I pray for, and all the people that come through it and come in my ministry, says I have people faces that flash by me, says God, that I just say hello to at the gas station or something. You know what I mean? Or in the, the local the local uh, produce store, Walmart or when they say whatever, or Publix. Walk past and say good morning to a greeter or a cashier. And there, and I woke up in the morning, uh, 2, 3 in the morning, and their face came in my spirit, and I went to praying for them. These folks, I don't even know their names, is God. But the Lord has allowed me to pass by them. Yes. And for whatever reason, that's God. And, and I, sometimes I, I know who, why I'm praying for them. I don't remember their names, but I see that cashier, I saw that day. I pray that God would touch them by their healing, whatever. And see, this is what the Lord wants us to do, says God. Always laboring. You know what I mean? Not being idle, says God. Being useful while you're here in the land of the living. Yeah, what you got the Holy Ghost for if you're not going to use it for somebody else? The Holy Ghost in you is to pour out for others. Not just in word, but in power and in deed. Amen. God remembers your labor, yes, in the gospel. And that's labor of love and of faith. And let that faith endure in you. Let your faith stand the test of time, says God. Let us pray, says God. Y la sombre, cubo sa, dasile, alandrón, seba mandose, 
Shabala Sundula Bonse, Shemondola Seba Molobo Semandala, Zunda Lendo Abasumi, Lando Ia Olosuma, Zimola Balan Sokobo Sinkata, Inandolo Simandre, Ilandrenzo, Shabandre. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let those be lifted up, those who have fought the good part of faith, those who are on the wall taking their last breath. May God breathe new life in those who have been fighting the good part of faith for years, not been prayed for, not been encouraged, not been supported. May God breathe new life in them right now in the name of Jesus. The battle we're preachers, the battle we're intercessors, the battle we're laborers of God's word in the kingdom agenda. May God breathe life strength, peace, encouragement. May they be lifted up. May they be filled. Fill up their capacity, O oh Lord. Bless them, Father and Lord. Meet every need, Father and Lord. Let it be no lack in their lives, Father God, right now, Lord Jesus. Father right now, Father right now, Lord. Give them new strength in the spirit, Father and Lord. Touch them. Holy Ghost, expand their capacity to move, to pray, to preach, to testify right now, Lord. Lift them up, Father, right now, far above their enemies. And Father, translate them, Father, out up to the valley of misery and shame into the land flowing with milk and honey, Lord. Answer every prayer request that was stuck in the spirit room, Father. Let it reach heaven. Let it turn back to them, Father and Lord. And let the prayer request be met, Father. Let the angel Gabriel, Father, right there, that visits Mary, Father, right there, Father, that carries, Father, the word of the Lord, Father, visit your people, Father and Lord. Shalabandro. Let answer prayers. Yes, Father, return back to the question, Father and Lord. Let those prayer requests, Father, be met, Lord Jesus. Should them, Father and Lord. Let them know, Father, right now, that you love them, Father, and that their labor was not in vain, God. You remember the trials. You remember the corn of the cows on their hands as they have plowed the field, Father. Done with the Lord, Father, and Lord. Father, they may not know, Father, right now, Lord, all the results of all the laboring, Father, and Lord, but show them a glimpse of it, Father, and Lord. They will be encouraged, Father, not for themselves, Father, but encouraged, Father, to continue to work, Father, and Lord. Let them be strengthened with might, Father, in their inner man's, Father, right and Lord. Trust them, Father and Lord. Bless their seeds. Let their seeds and seed seeds, Father, never be beggars, Father. Let prophets, apostles, pastors, and bandits, Father, flow through their bloodlines, Father. Let the hand of God stay up on their lives and remain on their bloodlines. We break every yoke and chain from Satan. Every assignment of witchcraft against their lives, Father, right now. Every spirit, Father, by every spirit of infirmity, Father, right now. Mind control, Father. We break those spirits right now in the name of Jesus. Let them be loose, Father, to obey and hear the word of the Lord, Father, right now. Lord. Give them strength, Father, right now. Lift them up, Father, right now, Lord. We breathe new life into them right now, Father, right now, Lord. And let them be about the Lord's business. Labanso. Let not word, but deeds in the power of the ghost follow their ministry, follow their lives, follow their testimonies, Father. Let them do it. Faith, Father, right now, Lord. Be fully represented through them, Father. Let others be able to eat from their fruit, Father, that they leave behind, Father. Bless them, Father, and they're going out, Father, and they're coming in, Father. Be them and strengthen, Father, right now, Lord. We pray these prayers right now, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Shabansu, sebabandose, sebabala sundo, inkalandre solobo mandre sundo lo bonsa. In the name of Jesus. God bless you, saints of God. O sendando si mandre sundu o. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Let your faith endure, says God. Let it stand the test of times. The Lord remembers your labor in the gospel. Because that is a labor of love. And you have not been forgotten, saints. You definitely have not been forsaken. Yes, I'm hearing prayers that were once held up, have touched heaven, and now they're returning back from where they came from. Those are answered prayers, thanks to God. Amen. There, be shown, there should be no more lack in the people of God that flow in his obedience. Amen. 
saints have been my need prayer for healing or deliverance, you contact my ministry. Thanks God. Go to my website at www.behindtheveilministry.org. www.behindtheveilministry.org. And I thank for all those who pray for this ministry, that so their seeds support, their tithe, their offering, whatever God puts their heart to do. There's no obligation, says God, but I say to everybody, you sow and you support, says God, what's pouring into you. Man, rather it's a physical building or online. Wherever the word of God is at, and wherever you see a man or woman of God that's been called and honored by the Lord, that's what you support. What's supporting you? Where you're learning from, where you're growing from. Who is meeting those needs? Amen. We thank the Lord, says God. Like, thanks God, and share this video. This word touched your heart. You've learned. God bless you through this message. Share. Amen. You are an evangelist. Share this message. Amen. You're not hearing that tracks. It's easy to do this here. Just push a button. Share. You are not promoting proper bird. You are promoting the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the Holy Ghost gave you this message. Here. Not prophet bird. I'm just a vessel that God chose to spoke to. Amen. And I released the word that he gave me to get to you. Amen. Be encouraged as God. By his grace as God. Name is probably ever heard from behind the bell mistress. But we are laying bricks for the kingdom of God. And I'll see you guys again come Wednesday night, Saints, at 730. Take care, says God. Touch basements, says God, if you need me. All right. Love you, Saints, God. Take care. Bye.